everybody, and welcome to Office Hours. I'm Daria Pino, PH Dork. Welcome. Um, just somebody, anybody out there, uh, let me know in the chat if everything's working. You can see and hear me clearly. Uh, if not, I have to fix something, so please let me know. And I'm going to wait until things, James, I love you, you're the best, always telling me things are working. Excellent, so we're doing good. Welcome. The first thing I want to do, uh, just generally <laughs> putting this out there, is I'm going to ask you guys to vote for me I'm in that link I just posted in the chat room. I, um, I'm up for Sexiest Geek in San Francisco, which is definitely true, duh. And today is the last day to vote. Sorry, phone, you are now off. And so if you guys could run over there and vote, that'd be awesome. I'm not going to win. Veronica Belmont's hotter than me, but you know. It would be nice to come at least in a second. <laughs> um, since I know what you're wondering, this is green gunpowder tea from Red Blossom Tea Company in San Francisco. And it is another freezing summer day here in the city of fog. <laughs> How are you guys? Everybody well today? Um, it's been a rough uh, couple weeks for me and my boyfriend, uh, his father passed away, and so it's been, you know, I'd, I haven't had time to, like, prep. A, I normally host a regular show called Summer Tomato Live that is usually closed for subscribers. Um, but I like to hold these office hours every, every other week or every couple weeks just to open it up for everyone, just take some random questions. I'm going to try to keep the shows a little shorter from now on. They've traditionally been an hour, but that's a lot for me, and it's also a lot for listeners and podcast listeners if, you're watching, it's, you know, it's, it's, an hour is a big commitment, and who, who has that kind of time? No one. So I'm trying to keep it more concise. Also, for those of you who haven't heard, I've recently released an audio-only version of the podcast, too. So if you don't want to do the whole video business, you can go subscribe to the audio-only version. Uh, the, if you just search in the iTunes store for Summer Tomato Live Audio, it will come up. Great. So... Things I would like to talk about today, if you guys are down, uh, I would, you know, if anybody has any more thoughts on the body image article that I wrote on Monday, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I, I've been thinking about that post for a while, and it was something that is sort of frustrating to me because it's, it's something I've had to deal with a lot when people, people, well, I've gotten some criticism in the past for people who've said that they don't like it that they sometimes use the word, like, you, I talk about weight loss and, and the word, I use the word skinny and I use the word thin occasionally. And I've written before about why I do that. And it's because for me, I, I, there's no point in preaching to the choir. I mean, yes, it's great that there are people that want to be healthy, but I feel like the biggest impact can be made with all the people who don't know that they want to be healthy. They just think they want to be thin and they want to be skinny, which is how I was when I was a teenager. And I'm basically... I've said this before, but my, my whole blog is basically a letter to old me. <laughs> um, and, you know, what's frustrating, though, is that, you know, when you think about headlines that you're writing or, you know, the branding that I want to do, the word healthy, it's, it doesn't have the impact I wish it did. And part of the reason for that is because I feel like dietitians and, and the people who, you know, argue against the body image stuff, you know, they're, they're, they're freaked out about turning all these girls anorexic, but what they're doing is saying you shouldn't be thin, you should be healthy, and, oh, hey, one sec, hey, it's Kevin, I'm filming, thanks, <laughs> um, anyway, so, yeah, I just thought that that was a, something I just wanted to mention, because you get, it set up as this opposite, it's like, you know, being too thin is unhealthy, you hear that, you know, you get told that, like, you know, that even the word healthy almost comes to mean chubby, you know, and that, that was the message I was getting as a kid. So I didn't want to be healthy. I wanted to be, I like, to me, and, and, and I think because of that, I focused less on it that I would, than I would have if I had sort of come to it more naturally, more organically. Instead, I was sort of put off by it, and I was like, well, if that's what healthy is, I don't want to be healthy. So I'm curious what you guys think about that. Um, and... If you have no thoughts, then I will move on to start taking questions. So this is an interactive show. If you have questions for me, and I imagine you do, then kindly there's a button like down there, I think, in the right corner that says ask a question, and you can use that to either ask a question with your 
typewriter and I will put it up like so. Or you can call in with a video question, and but please use headphones if you do that, and, um, and we can chat. So this first question is from Shannon. Thank you, Shannon, always asks excellent questions. She wants to know, are grains necessary or is it okay to go without them for a while? And this is a really, really interesting question. So, I mean, there are plenty of people who don't eat grains at all, right? And the, these, these are the paleo dieters. I mean, they don't have grains in Alaska, for example, like there, people have survived without grains. The paleo people argue that we weren't actually evolved to eat them. They showed up in agriculture only 10,000 years ago and we haven't adapted yet. I think that's kind of crap. Like I think that, you know, clearly we have somewhat adapted to eat them since we all do it and and I and there are certainly like they, for a long time that was a really it's a really good source of calories for cultures that need calories obviously we are no longer in a culture that needs extra calories but they also have very good nutrients in them B vitamins and minerals and not that you can't get that stuff anywhere else but you know it's not like it's a it's not like sugar where it's completely devoid of anything beneficial so so the short, long answer is no with an if, yes answer, long, long answer yes with a but. So we don't, I don't know, I mean I don't think there's any data that we absolutely need to eat whole grains, but I don't think that eating whole grains precludes you from being healthy either. And you know, to, to some people this is a ridiculous argument, like the, the, the vegan advocates think that whole grains are the greatest thing in the world, right? So. You know, they think it's crazy that anybody would say that they're unhealthy, but there is a decent amount of data that gluten's bad for you, that, you know, lectins and other anti-nutrients can cause problems. But I think they're only problematic in very limited diets where, you know, if it, they've been shown to be dangerous, for example, in populations where they only eat three or four staple foods and the some of the anti-nutrients will prevent mineral absorption of other nutrients and so people will get like messed up teeth and stuff. But I think that that in, in our culture that's pretty much irrelevant, those worries. So my take on it is if you don't let, if you don't feel like you want grains, fine. I personally think life is way too difficult without grains and I don't, well I don't eat a ton of them. I do think they're a nice welcome part of my diet, particularly things like rice and where, where it doesn't, there hasn't actually been data that it's bad. like. You know, the Asian cultures obviously rely heavily on rice and are very healthy. And, you know, rice doesn't have gluten. Rice doesn't have a lot of the other problems that have been associated with wheat. So I'm a fan of rice. I'm a fan, you know, I don't even think corn's that bad if you're not talking about the processed fake industrial stuff that is grown to be turned into junk food. Just regular corn, I mean, it's very sweet, but, you know, it, again, it doesn't have gluten or anything like that. So that's it. That's my take on grains. <clears throat> And I don't know, what do you guys think? Do I have any paleo viewers today that feel strongly against that? And is, is the, are you guys just really a quiet group? Because there's like no questions in their chat, but there's quite a few of you. So, <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> this is a random question. So compare and contrast Trader Joe's never frozen grass-fed ground beef versus local frozen grass-fed beef. So I don't shop at Trader Joe's, or I haven't in a long time because it's just not convenient for me. If your question is whether or not it's important whether it's frozen and whether or not it's important if it's local, to me those are... Mm, not that important distinctions, so I wouldn't worry about either of them. And, you know, some people prefer to not have had their meat frozen for consistency and texture reasons. The question is, I, so are you? Sh so what I would do? That my my worry about Trader Joe's is that they pretend like they're not a huge company, but they're a huge company, right? And so they need huge suppliers. So they're not. It's not going to be some small farm where the cows are like frolicking in the fields, right? So, what, bye. Um, 
So I wonder what, like, is it really grass fed, like all the way through its life or is it just grass finished, which is another thing. So I would read the fine print on that, maybe go on their website, try to figure out where exactly that meat's coming from and get to the bottom of it that way because I don't, I, it's really hard to tell with that question. Like you really need to go do some investigation and I don't know, like I would choose my farmer that I know that lives down the street over Trader Joe's any day because I don't know Trader Joe's. But like if you're, if it's, you know, that's going to, if it's grass fed, it's likely going to be better than regular stuff you get at the grocery store. So it's like you're kind of splitting hairs, but at the same time, like if you have better options than, I mean, some better options almost certainly exist. Let's put it that way. But it's like, again, like you're kind of splitting hairs and I'm not sure how, you know, it's, you know, there's, there's like, I don't want to be a snob about it, but I personally have access to better stuff. So, so you say their organics, grass fed ground beef is usually from New Zealand. That's interesting. And it's fresh. That makes no sense. How about, maybe, maybe they're like aging it or something. That's hard to believe. Anyway, interesting question. <clears throat> Oh, this is uh, another interesting follow-up from Shannon. So in terms of losing weight, would you say refraining from eating grains would be beneficial? Honestly, no, I don't. And this is from my personal experience. So, I, and I've done this a lot of times. Like I've tried so many times to go on like a very low carb, grain-free sort of, like paleo style or Atkins style diet and I don't I don't lose as much weight then because I get I become starving and I, I know some people have the exact opposite like they they're not hungry when they do it they feel great they lose weight easily so people everyone's different for me personally I find that I eat more slowly I eat I enjoy my food more, I eat smaller portions, and I just am generally happier and do better and lose more weight if I'm eating a more balanced diet. So I, I don't know why, like, I think this is one of the most interesting questions of, like, that nutrition science is facing in the next hundred years is why are we all so different and why do we all have such different reactions to the same food? And to me, that's largely going to be why the scientific studies don't really pan out a lot of the time, like why you'll never see that one diet's really better than the other in a long term, because different things work for different people. And like 10% of the population will do better on the super low carb, 10% will be better on like no meat, low fat, you know, like it's just, like, I, you know, I would never tell anybody if something was working for them that they should stop doing it for some theoretical nutritional reason, right? So the 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 key here is to understand at least what constitutes a healthy diet so which basically means just cutting out junk food processed junk food anything with a lot of sugar flour chemicals dyes just fake junk once you've gotten rid of that stuff and you're basically eating whole foods and you're still not exactly where you want to be either in terms of weight or physical performance or you know, maybe you're still having digestive issues. At that point, you've got to start experimenting for yourself and figuring out what works for you. And once you've cut out all the junk, that's a lot easier to do because you have a baseline of healthy food and you can be like, well, okay, instead of having like grains for two weeks or a month, I'm going to just stick to lentils or something or, or cut it out all completely. Or, or, you know, if you're having digestive problems, cut out dairy for a month. That could totally be your problem. You know, and then if it's nothing changes, add it back in and see, see if that matters. So that's how I would approach this stuff. But the, 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 the real key for most people is getting to the point where you're not eating junk food and you're not eating the processed food. And so you can get to that experimental place. And you actually know and can tell in your body what's different because you're, you're already at a, a healthy place. Most people find benefit from going on a paleo diet or going on an Atkins diet or going on a low fat diet or going vegan. All like almost everybody who like, like Bill Clinton, like just was saying how great he feels because he's been vegan, but it's, 
it's not because he's vegan. It's because he stopped eating crap. <laughs> you know, he was eating like fast food all the time. I mean, now, honestly, I don't think he looks that great. He's got like big bags under his eyes and he, he's got sort of that vegan look. Um, but you know, it, it doesn't matter. He's going to be way healthier and he's going to feel way better. Of course he is, but it's not because he's not eating meat necessarily. So I, so when any, whenever anybody tells you they feel great on a certain kind of diet, that doesn't mean you will. And also what works for, and also the, the most important step is just getting off junk food. I know you don't eat a lot of junk food anyway, but like, you know, but like play around with it. If you are distrustful of grains, cut them out for two weeks, three, three or four weeks if you want. You know, you can always add them back. Definitely that amount of time without them isn't going to hurt you. But if you start, like what, what would happen to me is I would start getting really hungry. And, and then, you know, I wouldn't be able to do it. Like after like two weeks or something, I'd like go out drinking with some friends and then like I'd go get a burrito because I was just like starving to death. And, or I'd end up eating like, seven eggs or something because I was just so hungry like I just I, there was no like satiating that so I just couldn't do it but some people are awesome at it <laughs> in my experience guys do a lot better on those diets than girls do yeah okay next question coconut water and Gatorade equals sugar water so what to drink if you're an athlete and water isn't enough uh, well, if you're an athlete and water isn't enough, those things are fine. So I think that's sort of the confusion. Also, real coconut water is awesome. It's just the stuff in the bottles that, that is gross. And you can get real coconuts at Whole Foods or wherever. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're an, if, seriously, if you're an athlete and water is not enough, you need sugar. I'm not sure what the question is. It would be cool to find one that was just glucose and not fructose. I don't know if they make something like that. But that seems like that would be a good option if you could pull it off, if you could find it. Yeah, I mean, I, so you need the electrolytes, right? And you, you probably need the sugar. I, I, don't, I don't really think this is something athletes need to worry about. Do you, do you care to elaborate in the chat room? I mean, you could try like real juice and, and even, even water it down. Then it's at least like like your own like fresh squeezed juice. It's always an option. Oscar Delgado in the chat room says it's orange juice is has more glucose. I haven't checked into that, but it could be true. This is a great question. Would you recommend to use bean dishes to replace grains when one is working on weight reduction? Actually, yeah. So that could potentially really help. Um, in my experience, beans are an excellent substance. So this is my favorite part of uh, Tim, Tim Ferriss' low-carb diet. Six days a week, he eats a lot like me. Um, and one of, those, one of the things I liked the best about it was that he includes grains, or not grains, lentils and beans in like every meal. And to me, this is one of the best things I ever did when I started eating beans and lentils regularly because first, it, it takes away, like I said, when I, I get starving, when I cut grains out, I can eat beans instead and I feel great. Um, they're very, very nutritious. There's more iron in lentils and way fewer calories than in like a serving of lentils than in a steak. They're not, it's not quite as bioavailable, but it's still really, really a good source of minerals and they're delicious. Like if you get, if you get into it and most people I know who have gotten sort of into the bean and lentil thing and you don't buy the canned stuff, but you get some decent beans from like, like either the bulk section of Whole Foods or even Rancho Gordo heirloom beans or Zersun heirloom beans that you can order online and soak them yourself, cook them yourself. And that get, first of all, you won't get any digestive problems if you're soaking your beans yourself. And second of all, they taste amazing. Like they don't taste anything like you get out of a can. And I found that they do really help with like satiety making you full and with weight loss so yeah I think it's a great thing to try for sure it's a great thing to try so I just want to talk to Brandon a little bit in the comments so he wasn't sure if being an athlete athlete made sugar consumption okay or not the thing is sugar is in, in your body is bad when you're not using it 
when, when it's just like sitting around in your liver and converting to fat, if your blood sugar is low and you're like, muscles are pumping and you, you need that fuel. So is it, what's bad is excess sugar. So that, I mean, if you're an athlete and you're sitting around doing nothing that day and drinking a lot of sugar, that's bad. But it's the excess sugar that's a problem. And when you're working out, you're not gonna have a lot of excess sugar because your, your muscles are burning it right there on the spots. <laughs> Try Tracy Dry Bean Festival on September 10th. Wow. Amazing. This is a good question. So what kind of carbs would you recommend to give energy for a workout but prevent weight gain? So exactly what we were just talking about. My favorite, favorite, favorite thing to eat before a workout is beans. So what I'll do is I'll get either beans or lentils for lunch and I'll, you know, I'll make like a cup, of, I'll have like a cup of them, something like that. And I will cut up some like maybe thinly slice some carrot or some cucumber or a little radish and I'll chop up like a lot of herbs, like a cilantro or parsley, just like a big handful of that. And um, I don't know, maybe cut up a tomato in there, some red pepper or something, and then put some olive oil, maybe lemon juice, maybe some red wine vinaigrette or something like that, a little salt and pepper. It's, it's really, really tasty. It's, it's small, so it doesn't give you that like knot in your stomach that you just ate too much, but it's really filling and really satisfying, and you have tons of energy, or I, I get tons of energy off that and if anything you'll lose weight I think so I think that's a, my personal favorite the, the other good workouts I have is when I eat birthday cake but that's probably not good for weight loss <laughs> uh, this is a question it's okay Nick I have to say I don't know so I'm not a bodybuilder I don't follow up on this stuff I'm skeptical of so he wants to know the difference between hemp protein and whey protein and what my opinion of creatine is. I don't, all that sort of processed protein scares me. Uh, if nothing, like the one thing I did actually believe in the China study was that isolated casein, which is the one of the proteins in milk, can be dangerous when isolated and, and served in high concentrations. And I just, I don't think there's enough data on this stuff, but I don't really know that well. So I don't know, I could, I, I, bodybuilding isn't really my thing. I'm, I'm more of a, you know, overall healthy eating and weight loss kind of girl. Um, if you are, if you're a subscriber and you want to talk to me about that, like privately in the newsletter, we can, you know, I'll, I'll dig it, I'll dig into it a little bit for you. Um, but it's just some, something I don't really know off the top of my head, sorry. <clears throat> This is an interesting question. What is your opinion on the coconut oil soft gel capsule for GI problems and as a dietary supplement? I've never heard of that. I think coconut oil is a good source of short chain fatty acids, which have been shown lately to be fairly good for you. However, you have to be careful with coconut oil because they frequently hydrogenate it, which turns it into trans fat, which is bad. For GI problems, my favorite, my favorite solutions for GI problems, number one, watch your dairy because a lot of people are sensitive to dairy. Number two, try integrating probiotics. Like, and, and you have to play around with different ones. I did a whole show on probiotics, but I like, I'm liking miso, kimchi, sauerkraut, and even kombucha is pretty good. Yogurt, is not, not so much, a little bit maybe. Maybe kefir isn't that bad. Uh, third, chew. I find like when, when I get stomach aches, it's always when I'm starving and I eat too fast. Slow down, chew your food, don't eat too much. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's all for GI stuff. So I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I've never heard of coconut oil for that specific reason. So that's interesting. If you want to elaborate, you can. I'm going to pop over to the chat room real fast. I've heard that hemp protein is missing some of the amino acids in animal proteins or something. Um, might be. A lot of proteins are. Most of them are missing lysine. Um, that's not that hard to get. I mean, you're, not, you're almost certainly not deficient in lysine. 
as long as you're eating like meat and eggs and stuff. And I mean, I mean, vegetarians aren't either, as long as they're eating a good mixture of beans and grains and stuff. So I, I, I don't worry about protein inadequacies. I mean, if you're a serious bodybuilder, maybe. But anyway. Uh, have there been studies comparing grass-fed beef to grain-fed beef in the diet? I believe there have. I don't know them off the top of my head. There's definitely like differences in nutrition content. There's definitely differences in omega-3 fatty acid content. Uh, I mean, there's going to be issues. I mean, the grain-fed ones are going to have antibiotics, right, because they can't really digest them. And so the feedlots give the grain-fed animals like tons of antibiotics, and that's where all of our antibiotic resistance comes from. So... But I, you know, James, if you email me, we, I can dig those up for you um, and, like, get to the bottom of this. But, I mean, there's definitely some data on this. Michael Pollan talks about it in, I think it's in Indefensive Food, or maybe it's Omnivore's Dilemma. In one of his books, he talks about it a little bit. Let's see. I make beans myself from scratch, but I still gain weight and have digestive problems. Why is that? Um, that's interesting. So there could be a lot of reasons. I mean, it could be something other than the beans. Uh, the, the thing is, it's really tough sometimes when you're trying to figure out what you can eat. And... It's, it's, it's really hard for me to give you advice without, like, looking at a food journal. But so you're currently gaining weight. Have you tried chewing? <laughs> chewing really helps a lot. Let me switch over to the chat. Um, yeah, I would just keep playing around. Sometimes I, I've definitely talked to people that if they make the switch very – rapidly from junk food style diet to like a lot of vegetables and a lot of beans like all at once it can be rough on the digestive system uh, especially you know certain kinds of vegetables like like I, I'm a little sensitive to cruciferous vegetables which is like broccoli cauliflower stuff like that kale cabbage um, but when I started chewing more it really helped and, and I started eating slower it really helped and, um, yeah, I, I just, I haven't ever had problems with beans that I've made at home. And the reality is, though, you can gain weight eating anything. Like, you can eat really healthy and still gain weight. It's, it's just that it takes a lot more of the food. Um, that, that, this is, I don't know, email me about this. This is something we can talk about some more. And there could be a lot of reasons for that. Okay, so Brandon, um, your question about oxidizing nuts and oils and stuff is exactly what we're going to be talking about next week. So I am going to save that for then and wrap this up. Um, I'm going to answer this question real fast. I eat fish every other day, always wild-caught salmon, so just one or two more fish to add into my diet. There's so many good fish, so I love, I mean, there are, I love sardines, I love trout, I love, uh, I eat a lot of halibut, and I mean, I just, I find a good fish market where you can buy, where they have good stuff, That's and then just get, I always just get what's fresh, so um, if, you, if you have more specific questions. Tilapia, I've heard weird things about it. It's mostly um, farmed, and I've heard that it could be bad. I'm not, and plus, it has a nasty consistency. I think it's kind of like I don't know, I'm not a big fan of tilapia. Yeah. All right, cool. So um, thank you guys for joining. This was awesome, and I, next week I'm going to be having a live show on Summer Tomato Live about how dangerous it is to heat oils too high or what happens when oils go rancid and all that stuff. 
So I believe that's next Wednesday night at 6 o'clock Pacific time. So join us then. If you would like to participate in that show, you can sign up at tinyletter.com slash summer tomato, which will give you access to my awesome newsletter called Tomato Slice, which gives you like these one-on-one -on -one interactions, emails with me. So I do have some places on Summer Tomato where I will answer very easy questions for people, but the problem is I've gotten totally overwhelmed with work and I just can't keep up with those. So if you're a Tomato Slice subscriber and you reply to my newsletters, I will, I, I prioritize your questions and I go to, a, I mean, so you're paying subscriber, I go to more lengths to help you out and work with you to f solve your problems. So that's the main benefit of the newsletter. I also send out little tidbits and extra content every once in a while that's not on Summer Tomato. And lastly, you get access to the live shows, and they're super fun. So thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I will see you next week. Over and out.